All right, guys. Uh, this morning we're going to be doing some uh, some watermelon grafting. I think this is the kind of video that everybody's been wanting to see. I know that uh, some of the other videos might not be as exciting as as this one might be, but uh, trust me, uh, all the other videos are leading up to this and are going to follow up with with the grafting and. And every every aspect is important, so I'm just trying to relay as much information as I can to you all uh, in hopes that you can uh, be successful doing this. So without uh, getting long-winded, I'm going to go over some supplies that you will definitely need. So here I've got a, uh, a paper towel, obviously you can see that, uh, and some of my tools that I use. And as you can see, they're in this little cup. Uh, shot glass, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's full of alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and it's just to keep them disinfected as I go. I'll get to that here in a minute. But this is an X-Acto knife. I'm sure you've all seen these uh, with a brand new blade, so it's good and sharp. Uh, definitely need this for the, the surgery. Uh, and today we're going to be doing the hole insertion method, so... I've got a tool that I made just for that, and uh, it is a stainless steel uh, TIG welding rod. It's a, the diameter on it is 332nd, and it's sharpened down to a, a very, very, very fine point. And it's smooth, there's no rough edges, so it's not going to catch. It's just, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say it's surgically precision but it's 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 pretty close uh, and it and it works really well so those are a few things you'll need put them back there another thing you'll need is a spray bottle full of i use uh, room temperature water high quality h2o and this is for misting your plants after you get them grafted so you definitely need that I also keep this jug of alcohol and what I do with it is I'll disinfect my cleaning surface before I get started and sometimes I'll even clean it while I'm grafting after I do a few I might come in and and uh, get it cleaned up a little bit better so I just want to clean where I'm going to be cutting and, and handling all these seedlings I know uh, this could be uh, a touch on the overkill side, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So, whatever. Everything we do is overkill. So, so what I've got here is I've got my bushel gourd. Okay, this is about the right size for grafting for me. This is the size I like. And if you can look at the stem, the stem size is, is about like I want it to. I've got three of them sitting here. I'm going to do three for you. And then I've got three watermelons. I might have to go get another one out of the little uh, grow tent to uh, show you because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher up one of these and show you what the watermelon stem looks like. Uh, so let's get started. So the first step is I'll grab this and we're going to remove the first true leaf. Now all that marrow stem that's on top of the stem, you'll see when I cut it off, you want to get rid of all that junk. What you want is a good surface, a good flat surface up here to make your hole. So I'm going to cut these off. So I grab my tool out of the alcohol, dry it off good. And I may move my camera around to get you closer. I know it's, it's hard to do this by myself. So I'm gonna try and get you all as close as I can without uh, making a mockery out of this. So what I do is I'll just grab with my fingers and move some of this out of the way. This is my first one of the year, so I know I'm probably gonna be a little shaky. And just we're just going, we're just being careful. And look at there, we got it off there. Now, you'll be able to see 
what I was talking about, about getting a good flat surface right here. All right. Now you might see a, a few remnants of some of this on the my little winding area up here. And if you see anything else, which I don't see right now, you would you would carefully scrape that off. Okay. So now, with that being done, we grab our tool, our hole insertion tool, and we're going to make a a hole starting in the center of this. And we're going to come out at an angle about like that okay now this is going to be a little slow tedious process and, and we're going to take our time so what i like to do is i like to take one of my fingers whichever one and i want to put it down here to feel for this tool as it comes out you don't want it to go way out the bottom or way up right up underneath the cot you want it to be at a good angle you it's hard to explain but you'll see so let's let's give it a run start near the center all right i got it started now what i'm going to do is i know it's not a drill bit but we're going to just real easily back and forth twist it you know just like that and with this finger here you'll feel it you'll feel it come out all right, now I feel it. I feel it, and we're going to keep twisting. We're in no hurry. If you get in a hurry, you'll split this rootstock, and uh, you won't be happy about that. It went through my finger a little bit there, but you see that shiny little tip? That's about what I want. Now I'm going to keep working it nice and slow, nice and slow, nice and slow. And you can come up and down. But all along, you're, you're going slow. All right. Now you see that? You see where I went in? All right, great. Now I'll just take this, and usually I'll prop this up against something, but this one here is pretty stout, so I'm just going to sit it up here, and you should be fine. Now... This is the part where a little bit of urgency may come into play. You don't want to waste no time with these uh, little watermelon seedlings. And I will show you a few things that I found that uh, will come in handy. As you see all this uh, clear film that's part of the seed coating, if you can get that off of there, it's, it'll probably be good because when you go to put that in your healing chamber, sometimes that organic matter can... Uh, cause some problems as far as just it, it'll kind of mold sometimes and whatnot but this is the right size i like for grafting you can see the first true leaf is starting to show up so i'm gonna go ahead and lop this dude's head off just like this nice and slow all right i'm gonna run this one just to show you what i'm talking about we're gonna make two cuts and the first cut is going to be on the flat side of the watermelon. So as you can see, I know my camera's not focused in great, but one side of the watermelon is flat, and the other end is, is more narrow. It's an oval shape. All right. So we're going to take, the, take this watermelon by its cotyledons here, and we're going to lay them down like this. I'm going to move my camera so you can see better. Don't know how I'm going to do that, but let's prop it up with something here. Hopefully you can see that better. So yeah, we got our, uh, our watermelon laid down here. And I'm going to make a cut, a long sweeping cut. And I'll show you. On the flat side first so now you can see where it's shiny here I've exposed the raw flesh I just went down at a, at a sharp angle just like that now the first cut was made laying down that way now I want to turn it up 
90 degrees and make a cut the other direction, okay? So starting at the same point, you're going to draw it out to a really, really fine point on the other end. So now we've got a super fine point and we've exposed raw flesh on all but one side. Now, when you're doing this, you may want to not waste a lot of time because as soon as you cut this watermelon's head off, he starts to go limp. So I may still be able to get that one in there without causing any problems. So what I'll do is I'll twist this one last good time. And remember that raw flesh that we have right here. We want that to go on the inside part of this draft, just like that, to where this tail come out of this bottom hole that we just made. Seam coming out. See that tail? Coming out. Now, I'm going to redo this one because I waited a little bit too long to get this. See how it's limp? It's because it's been too long since I cut his head off. But you see how it went in there nice and good. The tail sticking out. That's the idea. Now, what I would do is put this in a tray, mist it lightly, and you're done. You. You know, I see people using these grafting clips down here with the hole insertion method. You do not need them. If you, personally, I, I think if you find a need to use a grafting clip on the hole insertion method, you did something wrong. Uh, either you split your, your rootstock out or your hole's too big and your watermelon falls out because and you can't make it fall out. It's in there. So save your grafting clips, uh, something else. Hole insertion method, do not need them. Don't even buy them. <clears throat> so that one's that one's done. But I'm gonna redo it just to show you again with uh in a more uh real time speed. So I don't uh get my hole back where I want it. Alright, so now I'm gonna go at next speed and try to get this graph done correctly all right now flat there's that there's that Just like that can't fall out see the tail sticking out that's a good graft it's done all right on to the next give him a little splash all right Now, in between each graft, I'm cleaning my tools. I clean everything. All right. Let's do one more. And I think you all have the hang of it. So there you go. We're lopping his head off. This is the part where you want to take your time. All right, this is a good example here. You see where 
my cutting surface isn't clean on the top there where I'm going to put my hole, I left a little bit of trash, which is okay. So I'm going to take it and just lop the rest of it off. Scrape real easy. All right. Now that one's ready for a hole. Same thing. Starting in the center. It's hard to do this and show you at the same time, but yeah, I'm in the center. Now I'm going to take him on home. There's a lot of ways to do this, but this is the way that I do it, and I uh, had pretty good luck. So you uh, you may get to the point where you you get pretty good at grafting, and you may want to do it a little bit different. That's all. That's all good. That's all good. All right. Got my hole made. Got my watermelon. Chop him up. Laying down flat. One cut. Two cuts. Lay him down. Grab this. Give it another little twist. Open that hole up some more. You don't want it too big. You want it to just right. You'll, it's a feel thing. You got to feel for it. All right. Here's the raw flesh. It's going to go towards the inside where that tail sticks out. See the tail? Tail sticking out. Can't even dump him out. He's ready. Fine mist. That's it. So, that's all there is to it on the hole insertion method. Uh, you know, it takes a little bit of practice, but as you, uh, as you do it a few times, you'll get the hang of it and you'll realize that it's not as hard as it looks. Um, I recommend getting a nice clean area that's quiet. You don't want kids jumping on you when you're doing it or dogs or cats. Uh, a quiet place that you can focus and uh, yeah, it's no problem. So I'll catch you on the next step.